What's up? I'm Troubleshoot. In my previous videos, I showed you how to downgrade Fallout and install Fallout London through both the official automatic means and the official manual means if you don't trust putting your login details into a separate program. In this quick video, I'll be taking you through installing all of the add-ons mentioned on the Fallout London Downgrader Nexus Mods page. So ENB, Reverb and Ambience Overhaul, Plugin Preloader, etc, etc. We'll be setting up all of these, including the ultra-wide fix, so you can get the best experience experience that you want out of Fallout. To begin with, probably the most requested that I've seen on the Discord is the ultra wide fix. You can head across to the files tab at the very top and choose Fallout London Downgrader with add-ons in order to download most of these extra add-ons in one place. Choose slow download and you will need a Nexus Mods account in order to do this. If we open up the zip, you'll find a folder inside of it with a bunch of different mods, including the ultra wide compatibility fix. If you're looking for just the ultra wide plugin, check this one at the very very bottom here, download it, and you should see the same folder as what we have in this pack. I'll be using the pack just for simplicity's sake. I'll start by extracting all of these to a separate folder on my desktop just called mods for now. In the future, when we've installed these mods, we can just delete this folder. As I've already downgraded Fallout 4 and installed the Fallout London mod, I can skip over the downgrader here. If you haven't already done so, you'll find a link in the description down below for two guides on doing that. For all of the mods, we'll need to find our Fallout install folder, so right click it in Steam, choose manage and browse local files. If you have the game on the good old games launcher, you'll do a very similar thing there to get to the games install folder. To install most of these mods, you simply just open them up and drag them to the games folder over here. For example, the ultra wide compatibility fix, this data.raw file contains a data folder. Extract this and move it across to where your game folder is. We'll be combining these two folders. Drop it in an empty spot and overwrite if necessary. Now, congratulations, we've installed the ultra wide mod. At this point, if you haven't already fired up Fallout 4 at least once on your current install, you'll need to launch it using F4SE Loader or the Launch Fallout London shortcut over here. Once the game is started, you can exit out of it and we can tell it to use ultra wide. Open up a new file browser using Start and E, the Windows key and E, head across to Documents, followed by My Games, then Fallout 4, and we'll be opening fallout 4 prefsini with any text editor. I'll be using Sublime Text, but Notepad works just fine. Inside of here, you'll be looking for eye size, so hit Control F and search, and you should find somewhere down here a height and a width. Here is where you'll need to punch in your monitor's dimensions. In my case, mine's 3440 by 1440. Once we've done that, we can save it and we can close it. Yours might be 2560 by 1080 or something similar. You can check this by hitting start, typing in display, opening display settings, and you should see under display resolution, the resolution of your monitor here. 3440 by 1440 is ultra wide and switching across to it on my system with this file saved, we can actually launch up our game now and it should work in ultra wide mode. So I'll open the F4SE loader or the launch Fallout London shortcut over here, play, and it should work. So here we go. You can already see it's ultra wide as things are properly in each corner. I can continue as I've already created a save game and after it loads, we can now play it with proper true ultra wide support. Obviously, depending on your resolution of your monitor, it could be really good or not the best. Anyways, this is the ultra wide mod and one of the many that we'll be installing in just a moment. For now, remember how the world looks as we'll be customizing it a bit further. Quitting out and coming back to my desktop, let's continue with installing some of the other mods here. For example, some of these over here under recommended mods. The Fallout London developers highly recommend you play the game with these mods. They're completely optional and not required required, but some of them may enhance your experience. You can use a mod manager for ease, or you can install them manually. Remember to read the mod descriptions in case anything is missed here. First of all, ENB. Over here, they go through how to download this yourself and install it. So we'll head across to this link or in the mods folder we downloaded as recommended mods, you'll find links to all of the different mods here as well. So ENB takes us to the ENB website. Head across to download at the very top, scroll down and choose Fallout 4 from the list here. Then choose version 0494, so this second latest version here, scroll all the way down and choose download at the very bottom here. It's a very web 1.0 type website, the downloads aren't too obvious. Once it's done downloading, you can keep it and open the zip file and we have these inside. We need to open the wrapper version folder here and 
we'll need to extract the contents of this folder into our Fallout 4 root folder where Fallout4.exe is. Then we can use Shift Enter in game to edit its settings, and an EMB preset with some fixes has been included in the Fallout London add on folder. So we'll move all of these into our game's install folder, which is right here, just like that. Once they've copied, we'll have a look at the mod pack that we downloaded, which has the ENB and reshade over here. These two files will copy and paste into our game's root folder over here, overwriting where necessary, or replacing where necessary. Just like that, we've now successfully installed ENB and reshade. The rest of these mods seem to suggest using a mod manager. The easiest one I can think of is the Nexus Mods mod manager, Vortex. You can find a link to download it down below. We'll download and install it and open it up. Then we can sign in in the top right by clicking this icon, authorize, continue, and, and now we can add Fallout Form. Head to the game section, search for a game, Fallout, and we'll be selecting Fallout Form. Choose Manage, then Fix when it says mods can't be deployed. Next, Apply Fix, suggest Apply, and then Apply over here. That's only really necessary if you've got it installed on a different drive. Then we can choose Restart Now to restart Vortex if it pops up with an update notification, and now we can properly manage Fallout Form. So, as long as you have it selected in the top left, or or head to the games and select Fallout 4 to switch to it here. On the mods tab down here, we can manage what we have installed. Currently, it doesn't say that we have anything installed, but there are some things already set up, including Fallout London and of course the ultra wide fix. At this point, we could just click through the rest of the add ons here and install them automatically. So, Reverb and Ambiance will open this and choose Vortex over here instead of Manual. This will open up Vortex when we choose Slow Download, and it should pop in here in the Downloads tab, where shortly after it should be installed, and it'll then show on the Mods tab over here. We can do the same with XSE4 Plugin Preloader, Vortex, Download, and Slow Download, then Buff Out 4. Vortex, you'll see multiple requirements here, so we'll click download, slow download, and this should be downloaded and installed, as well as all of the extra requirements for it. However, if you don't see them installed as well, choose Vortex once more, and we'll need to install these. We've already got F4SE added by the mod manager, and XSE we just installed, so it's only the address library we need. We'll head across to it, Vortex, slow download, and wait for this to finish. Then the Fallout 4 configuration tool. While you can install this with the Nexus Mods tool, the best thing to do is to open this manually, manual download, slow download, save it, and you'll see all of these files. What they suggest doing is renaming our Fallout 4 launch to something else, then using this as Fallout 4 launch, so that when we start the game, it'll give us the option to customize our launch options. It'll give us the option to customize our settings. But as I don't want to do that every launch, I can just extract it to my game install folder and run the Fallout 4 configuration tool where we can customize thousands of options for the game. This gets super in-depth as well as tweaks, performance, camera, texture details, the UI, gameplay, audio, and settings over here. For the most part, maybe performance is what you want to play around with and the tweaks tab here, but as my resolution's already set, there's not much else I need to do. Then, the enhanced blood textures, as well as workshop rearranged, place everywhere, sim settlements, or sim settlements 2, I'll choose the latter, classic holstered weapons, see-through scopes, vanilla extensions, and the master plan can all be installed using Vortex. So I'll choose Vortex and download for each of these. The Sim Settlements 2 requires HUD framework and workshop framework. We will be downloading in just a moment and HUD framework we'll need to do as well. So we'll slow download HUD framework as well, as well as workshop framework, classic holstered weapons, see-through scopes, vanilla extensions, which requires the master plan as well. So we'll install this and the master plan. And that's really about it. We've already done ENB and Reshade, and we've also installed the Ultra Wide mod. With that, we've now installed all of the suggested mods by the developers. If you'd like to launch the game with Creation Kit, you can install the Stripped ESM Launcher or the Hexed ESM Launcher, and you can choose to follow these steps if you wish to do something like that. These will be available in the pack that we downloaded earlier as Stripped ESM and Hexed ESM. For now though, I'll leave both of those behind and have a look at what Fallout 4 looks like with all of these extra mods installed. Well, as soon as they finish, that is. During the installation, you may get a pop-up like this. See-through scopes, I'll leave it as is. I don't think we need to customize anything here. We'll choose patches. This should be fine. Finish, and we'll wait for the rest of these to install. Now that they're all done, 
The Mods tab should be updated with everything here. Then, quickly before launching, check the Plugins tab in the far left and make sure that all of the extra mods are enabled here. After you've ticked all of these, everything should be turned on and working properly. If you'd like to see the load order, you can head across to see users your username app.local fallout4 and you'll find a plugins.txt file. Every mod in here with a star before it is enabled and each of these are loaded in this order. So if we click play now, the game should be opened up as usual with all of our mods installed. So as you can see, ENB is working properly. We can use shift enter to open this up and we'll be selecting load followed by our London save game. If for some reason you're dropped into the Commonwealth in Fallout 4, you'll need to verify your Fallout London files and I'll show you how to do that in just a moment. And there we go. We've now loaded into Fallout London in ultra wide with all of our other mods working as well. So for example, shift enter, we can pull up ENB and customize how the world looks and our other mods should also be working as well. We should be able to build anywhere, etc. though we'll need to get far enough in the main story before we can actually build and things like that. As long as the mods actually have a star before them in that plugins file, then things should be working properly. Let's say for some reason when you play the game, you land up in the Commonwealth and it seems like Fallout London isn't installed. Head back to your install folder for the game. So in my case, Steam Apps Common Fallout 4 and in here you'll need to find Launch Fallout London, a shortcut to the installer files that we got earlier, either through GOG Galaxy or through manually installing it. Opening this, you'll see this pop up, choose update, and then choose install to verify or replace your Fallout London files, making sure everything works properly. If you deleted those installation files, you'll need to re download them and open up the installer from there to get it to work properly. Once you've installed here, you should be able to launch up the game using Nexus Mods Vortex, and things should be working properly. On top of this, in the plugin section here, you can see at the very bottom that London World Space and London World Space ESM are both loaded over here, meaning the total conversion mod has successfully been set up and installed. Anyways, hopefully you found this video useful. Thank you all for watching. My name's been Troubleshoot, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.